Hey friends, in order to get stronger, it's generally accepted that we need weights or some other type of resistance, like body weight. So, question, why does pushing on an immovable tree not make us stronger? While that might seem like a silly question, the answer is important for anyone trying to make fitness progress, tree hugger or not. And here's why. We have mechanical tension here and resistance, possibly more resistance actually than we would with some weights. And because of the force velocity curve, we might be expressing more force here than if we were moving the tree. And as we continue to get stronger, we would be able to express more force up until the point where we push the tree over. And because it's unlikely we'd be able to push such a large tree over, we basically have infinite resistance. Similar to how you won't run out of weights to lift in a well-stocked gym. Or I wouldn't run out anyway. Some of you are very strong, and we could theoretically just keep repeating this cycle. According to Newton's third law of motion, when we apply a force to this tree and it does not move, the tree is exerting an equal and opposite force back on us, even as we get stronger. So why doesn't pushing, pulling, and legging against this tree make us stronger? Why can't we get stronger this way? And the answer, as some of you may have already noted, is that you can get stronger this way. You can be a tree pusher, my friend. Kind of. See, there's a reason you probably don't know someone who got super strong just from pushing and pulling on trees. And even if you say, well, it's so inefficient compared to lifting weights, pushing against a tree like this would basically be a form of isometrics, which we know can make us stronger. Very quickly, in fact. And if we measured the amount that we were pushing, we'd be able to see that. So why haven't we found Avatar the Last Tree Bender? Why did he disappear when we needed him most? Or needed him at all, I guess. Well, there are a few reasons, and they might not be what you expect. Because it's not because, as some people might suspect, the lack of movement or the lack of muscle damage. Neither are really required for us to get stronger. As mentioned, isometrics do make us stronger. We know this both from studies, and if you want to know of someone that trains with isometrics, I do that. For me, it's one thing to read the theory and the empirical evidence, but I sometimes just want to try it for myself and see. So I built up my weighted pull-up largely with isometrics. I started taking it more seriously early this year, and it's nothing crazy yet, but I'll make a video on how I built up to a 135-pound weighted pull-up with isometrics. There are good and bad ways to train it. And isometrics aren't as fringe as some people might think. A lot of athletes nowadays still use them, and they used to be quite popular in the mainstream a few decades ago. If you know anyone into fitness over 50 or so, they might remember an isometrics craze. It got really popular, and there were different products around it, and people did get some results, but not long-term lasting results. Similar to tree pushing, it kind of is something that we know can work in theory, but no one really does it, and it kind of fades into obscurity over time, even though it can be super efficient and effective for some goals, and it's basically free as long as you have trees and walls. So why doesn't it stick? By the way, another person that does isometrics is Chris Johnson on the No Limit Squad channel. He's a friend of mine, and he talks a lot about isometrics, so if you like that, check him out. One big reason why training like this hasn't stuck around and doesn't usually work long-term is the lack of measurement ability. And this is more important than I initially realized. So if you're like, huh? I get it. I mentioned earlier that you'd be able to see yourself getting stronger. You'd be able to see your numbers going up when they slow down, when they speed up, when you break past the plateau, if you were able to see the numbers you were pushing against the tree. But the problem is, unless you have a very special tree or very specialized equipment, we can't. We might feel stronger and even get a little bulkier if we're very consistent with our tree pushing and tree pulling. But without accurate numbers, we really are just guessing to a degree. And to see the importance of this, imagine if you're someone who regularly goes to a gym. Imagine if you couldn't see the weight you were lifting. You could feel how hard that you're working. You could feel the effort, the exertion, but you can't see how much weight you're lifting. And if you're someone who does bodyweight exercise, imagine if you couldn't count how many reps you're doing. You could only feel it being harder or easier, sometimes. It'd feel like you're flying blind, at least some of the time, and it might be easy not to feel motivated after a while. And if you've spent some time in fitness, you'll know that it's not only important to track our progress for the sake of tracking it, but to react and respond to our results. If we're slowing down, then we might need to change something. Maybe we're not sleeping enough. Maybe we're not eating enough. Maybe we need a new exercise to help us break this plateau. Maybe there's something wrong with our form. Maybe I'm not controlling the weight enough. All these different things that we can do and try when we see progress slowing down in order to respond. And then when we start progressing again, we're like, ah, that was it, now I know. And perhaps this is importantly, if we're making consistent progress, if the weight continues to go up and our ability continues to go up, then keep doing what we're doing. A lot of the times we don't have to make a change anytime soon. And seeing the numbers goes up helps us know, keep going. So it's not only from a motivational standpoint of seeing higher numbers and seeing a green arrow and seeing a green light, but also from a tactical standpoint that feeds into the motivation. We know how to react. And because we have the confidence that we're doing something right or reacting and trying to fix what we're doing wrong, our progress is a lot more sustainable as result. And that's why it's important even to someone like me who trains a lot with isometrics, I've seen that it works both in the literature and for myself. And if all training equipment was just disappeared and Thanos from the world, and I only had trees to get stronger, I probably could, but I'd have a tougher time than I am now. So I want to give some solutions so you can try. Because we also want to make it convenient for ourselves. So if you have to drive 20 minutes to and from a gym in busy traffic after work, 
and you load up a very specific weight on a barbell in order to hold it for time, then you might not want to do it consistently. That will also affect our motivation. But to that point, I also know that a lot of people don't really care about isometrics, even if the theory works, even if they like it for other reasons. If they're going to go through the trouble of setting something up, weights on a barbell so you can measure it over time, then they might feel like, well, I might as well just lift the weight, which is perfectly fine. People have gotten stronger from that since there were people. So my goal with this video isn't to convince you to try isometrics, but to take a lesson from why isometrics hasn't worked for the general populace. We have something like isometrics, which is proven to be efficient and effective at many aspects of fitness, including strength, which is used by strong men in the past and modern day athletes. But it's kind of overlooked, and I think we can learn some lessons from this, because what makes it overlooked? Well, it's hard to measure, it's inconvenient to set up, and it can be very costly depending on how you want to approach it. And if we know that is what's making isometrics not work for many people, then regardless of how we're training, we can try to emulate the opposite. So if you want to be consistent and motivated with your working out, we may want to consider tracking our progress in some way. This can be reps or weight or time exercised. But either way, try to be consistent with our tracking. So when we see the numbers going up, we know we're doing something right. And if the numbers kind of flatline, then we know that we have room to adjust and optimize. We want to make it convenient for ourselves. This is a strong argument for calisthenics and body weight exercise. After a busy day of work, I know some of you work like 12 plus hours a day, sometimes hard, intense labor. You might not want to go to the gym and set up barbells or go for a jog. Some of you might, and that's great. But both effectiveness and convenience are important factors to us winning long term. And if your goal isn't just to lift heavy heavier and heavier weight, but just to get healthy, fit, and strong from home, you can do that with body weight exercise, progressive body weight exercise, so you find something that you can do and you work your way up as you get stronger. And lastly, to the cost aspect of it, I know fitness and health can seem out of reach sometimes to some people because they feel like it costs too much to be healthy and fit. Because we see celebrities, understandably so, who have millions of dollars and they're fit because they have time to go to the gym and buy healthy food. And the lesson I would take from this is that we can start with what we can do and work our way up as we become more able. So yes, sometimes healthy food is slightly more expensive. Not quite as much as we might think, but sometimes it is a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive. However, most of us can drink more water. If we can't afford a gym membership, we can use calisthenics or weights at home. If we don't yet have the time or energy for that, we can walk around a little bit more day to day. I really like isometrics and I would love to make a bunch of videos about it, but I also understand that it might not work for a lot of people for the reasons listed. However, the lesson we can take for that applies to many people, if not everybody. The reason why isometrics don't work for some people, we can take those reasons, invert them, and use them to our advantage. We can make sure we're measuring our progress. We can make getting healthy and fit convenient for us to the best of our ability. And we can take small steps within our time budget, both money and time budget, and seriously can benefit from that until we're able to do more. And I hope that can help you. Have a beautiful day. There's a free full body fitness routine based on these principles on our website if you want it. There's a fitness book version if you prefer books, and a beta mobile app if you prefer apps.